Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Borisov Jovanovic, and uh, I'm uh, in, uh, part of the Lime Microsystems. I'm representing, in fact, Lime Microsystems, and I will talk about adaptive digital predistortion, uh, which is realized using Lime SDR boards. Lime SDR boards uh, that has um, uh, Lime LMS 7002 transceiver IC 2x2C and uh, uh, this board also involves some uh, FPGA hardware, some Altera Cyclone uh, 4 uh, chip. So I implemented this for this demo and I will show the results at the first. I will not, I'm, I first must to, to apologize myself because I, I brought here some uh, Windows laptop, uh, <laughs> it's completely missed. Uh, I, I, I'm waiting for uh, 18, 18, uh, zero U, 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 Ubuntu. So <laughs> until it, it, uh, it, it gets here, so I will <laughs> use this. So sorry, I, I uh, had some problem with my previous laptop and I uh, replaced it with this. So um, why predistortion is needed? Uh, well, in fact, let me see here. Power amplifier, uh, they are basically uh, nonlinear devices, and their linearization is very important because they, uh, by linearization, you achieve better uh, power efficiency, and the the reduce you you should reduce your. Um, uh, uh, the cost of uh, your your wireless infrastructure. So uh, I create some demo, uh, which involves Lime SDR board and some small uh, power amplifier. It's Maxim chip, at, and I intentionally uh, put down, lowered the nominal power supply, it, which was five volts to three point three volts, in order to get some distortions to be noticeable on FFT. So uh, this, is, this is the spectrum. I use uh, W's CDMA um, waveform for, for this demo. And uh, as you can see, you have some distortions, and the three distortions, and uh, they are because of this power amplifier and its low power supply. So I will use uh, the distortion method that, that I have implemented within uh, my hardware, I will tell you after how I, I perform this. Let me see. First I need to press Well, I have first to to get the samples uh, from uh, the board. I have implemented uh, in FPGA predistortion model. So uh, I received the samples from that FPGA at the beginning, at the input of predistorter, output of predistorted, and also in the receive path. I received three streams of data. Uh, three st streams of data. So with these streams, I uh, do the offline calculation. That's pre performed on Intel CPU core. So uh, predistorter implements uh, all the mathematics inside, uh, but uh, I received the, the streams for that predistorter, predistorter and uh, I fi finally uh, took, uh, take these streams to, to get new coefficients uh, to upload in the uh, predistorter, which is basically like a filter. These are the results. As you can see, uh, there is no distortions on the sides of the spectra of WCMA signal. But uh, there is some uh, drawback. The, 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 there is some 
a disadvantage. I, I, sh I, uh, I um, reduced a little bit uh, power, uh, uh, power of, uh, of the signal. Uh, it's reduced for 2 dBs. Uh, someone can notice that, that but uh, that is because a um, uh, characteristic of a signal which is called uh, peak to average power ratio. I should implement in pre-distorter model uh, in, in, in front of, of this some crest factor reduction block which should deal with these uh, signals with high spikes. So when, when if, if I, I, I used both pre-distorter model and uh, uh, crest factor reduction blo block, I would achieve uh, distortion removal and at the same time I will uh, achieve the same power, power level as original signal. So in this demo I uh, get distortions out but uh, uh, there is small de decrease. I needed a little bit of uh, space on FPJ to implement this, uh, di these blocks. So, uh, all this is part of LimeSuit software. Uh, LimeSuit software is software supporting Lime, Lime LMS 7002 chip. I just implemented some new part of the software. Maybe so somebody of, of you uh, have already been using this uh, Lime software is for configuration of Lime LMS 7002 chip. I just added some, some uh, new function, some uh, DPD monitoring window, and also I have also changed the uh, FPGA gateway. Though, uh, so that is all for demo. I will stop jamming <laughs> everything. I will sh shut down this power amplifier. And I will continue with the presentation. So I so I will speak about uh, DPD model, and I will uh, then f uh, talk about some implementation pl platform. How I realized this, and I will give some measured results with real hardware with real. Uh, um, power amplifiers. Well, um, for some, um, well, we usually uh, uh, check some uh, characteristics when, when speaking about quality of signals. We, we find ACPR and EVM. So uh, when ACPR is reduced and A EVM is improved, uh, we, we can obtain some uh, complex uh, modulation shams and uh, uh, we can uh, implement higher bandwidths and uh, multi-carrier signals. So uh, our solution improves uh, the, the both characteristics, both EVN and ACPR. Uh, it's important to say this, that uh, this um, solution is open source. It can be uh, downloaded on uh, GitHub. But that open source solution is implemented, in fact, for some other type of the board, not this one, Lime SDR, uh, but one other uh, called QPCI Express, which is 4x4 four four MIMO. And with this board, you can do the LT stack, and at the same time, we, you, you should run DPD with LT stack. <coughs> Basically, uh, architecture is based on of um, uh, adaptive uh, digital predistortion model, which is given in the figure. Uh, you have two main blocks called predistorter and post distorter. You, you, you can see predistorter is implemented within FPGA. In it performs some mathematics, fast mathematics. For example, um, for every sample with a sample rate 30.72, I do some complex mathematics and um, uh, which is some something like some filter and um, uh, the signal 
uh, at predistorted output is predistorted in order to linearize the, the, the following power amplifier. So uh, this, this is some kind of baseband processing after um, the, the samples are uh, upconverted, fed to LMS7002 chip. Uh, Upconversion is performed within uh, this transceiver chip and after uh, the output is uh, connected to the power amplifier. A uh, post distorter block is implemented within uh, CPU core, within uh, in, in the software, in fact. So um, <coughs> that predistorter just takes the, the arrays of samples uh, of uh, predistorter input, output, and uh, the signal in receive path. And with th th this stream of samples, uh, it calculates uh, the, the new coefficients. New co coefficients are then uploaded into the, the FPGA, into the gateway. So it's some kind of iterative process. Uh, we we obtain this um, that uh, the the process converges within uh, one or, or or two iterations. So it's very fast. The the thing uh, which is not fast, in fact, is um, communication. Um, uh, I have implemented that uh, that streams are taken from FPGA chip. Uh, I have some um, 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 I have some um, mm, I can read some FPGA registers and take all these samples and uh, according all that samples I can calculate and uh, upload new coefficients. So uh, the model itself is based on uh, Voltaire series for modeling nonlinear system. Um, so uh, the both predistorter and post distorter has, has he has the same uh, have the same model and they share uh, the same complex co coefficients. Um, <coughs> according to uh, these streams uh, we do the training uh, which is based on uh, minimizing uh, uh, recursive least square error. So that algorithm just changes the, the complex coefficients in order to minimize, minimize the, uh, the difference between the signals and at predistorter output and uh, the, 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 uh, the, pre, uh, the, the received signal. So uh, uh, at the end when the process converges we have uh, two, two equal signals. Uh, the identity one uh, X and the, the second uh, which is received. This figure shows the implementation. Uh, on LIME SDR board we have FPGA, LMS, LMS 7002 chip, uh, uh, LMS 7002 chip performs up conversion and down conversion and LIME SDR uh, uh, performs uh, it, uh, it um, uh, performs the, 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 the predistorter. Uh, so predistorter is implemented in, uh, in LIME SDR board and also um, uh, there are some uh, other blocks uh, for uh, th th that are used for capturing the, the samples. Uh, this board offers uh, two uh, DDR2 memories, memory blocks, and I used one of them to, to store the samples. So I, I have the option from my software to, to, to tell the chip to start um, sampling, to, to start uh, recording the, the array of samples into the DDR2 memory. And after that, uh, when I find out that uh, that array is uh, finished, that um, I, I, I can read all these samples and uh, uh, took them into the, the, the software. In software I perform all the cal calculations and after that I will uh, upload uh, the new coefficients in predistorter model which is inside the FPGA. So I have predistorter block, ca capture RAM blocks for predistorter input, output and the received signal and all these signals are um, uh, transferred uh, through USB port uh, 
to CPU core which performs all these calculations. Um, Besides the modifications in gate pair, I also created uh, some kind of GUI uh, which is uh, dedicated to DPD. Uh, um, signal YP is predistorted to cancel uh, the distortion of power amplifier. Signal X it's a measure of uh, power amplifier output. As you can at the beginning, it's quite distorted. After, uh, when uh, distorted uh, is run, uh, you, we have a power amplifier linear, linearized and a pre distorted output is uh, without distortion. Also, we have uh, here the error between pre distorted and post distorted output at the beginning of, of the process. Uh, we have huge error, and after when uh, conversion uh, uh, predistortion is is done, the the error is almost zero. is It is almost flat line. That error is presented on these figures with uh, before predistortion and after the the predistortion. So we have uh, for uh, testing. Use several power amplifier. First test case is power amplifier Maxim integrated Max 2612. Uh, Saturated power was uh, 19 dBm, and for uh, that case we used single carrier WCDMA test model one with uh, RF center frequency of 2.14 gigahertz. The second uh, case was uh, power amplifier class J, gun camped. And uh, in fact, we, we, we used two amplifiers which are cascaded. Uh, the first Maxim amplifier, and uh, which is followed by the class J, G and Hemp amplifier. Uh, the saturation power is, uh, saturated power is 40 dBm. And for that case, we used single carrier WCDMA test model one with freq set center frequency equal to 1.5 gigahertz. And the third uh, test case uh, is uh, with um, uh, our power amplifier, uh, 10 watt power amplifier. Uh, we used uh, we, we, we used 20 MHz LT signal with RF center frequency uh, 2.65. So um, this is the, with the first maximum integrated power amplifier. As you can see before, a, a pre distorter is run. Uh, we have some distortions uh, that are minus 34 dBCs and the EVM was 6.58% after uh, uh, pre-distortion pre is implemented, is, uh, is uh, performed. We have some improvement in ACPR, sorry. Uh, it is uh, minus 51 and we have in EVM uh, 3.24. So with the pre-distortion, we uh, improve both EVM and ACPR. Also, what I did not mention is that uh, uh, with pre-distortion, we can also improve not only uh, power amplifier, non-linearity, uh, but we can also uh, uh, impact uh, IQ imbalance of transmitter. This uh, model, uh, solves two things, power amplifier non-linearity and the other one is uh, IQ imbalance, uh, especially one which is the dynamically uh, frequency dependent. So uh, with this model we uh, implemented all these, uh, we solved all the uh, both, both problems. The second test case is the class J GN hemp amplifier. Uh, before, without with ADPD, ACPR was minus 43 dBCs, and with ADPD, it was minus 53 dBCs. So this amplifier is consisted of uh, two uh, two amplifiers, um, Maxim uh, 2612 and uh, GAN amplifier uh, with uh, saturated power of 40 dBm. So uh, with using of this, you can make your base stations uh, with uh, uh, higher range. 
you should improve your signals uh, significantly. And the third case was uh, our power amplifier. Uh, it operates in frequency range uh, 2.1 up to 2.6 gigahertz. Uh, it produces 30 dBm output modulated power and uh, it has two um, uh, parts, pre-driver and driver. Pre-driver is based on uh, GAS hemmed transistor and the other uh, part, driver is based on uh, hemmed transistor um, uh, 10 watt ten, uh, transistor in uh, which covers the, the frequency range up to 6 gigahertz. Uh, we, uh, with using this power amplifier we tested uh, two signals 20 MHz LT and uh, uh, 10 MHz LT signals and uh, the spectrums are given in following slides. So uh, without ADPD at the start we had minus 40 dBCs and after uh, DPD is performed uh, it goes up to minus 49 so we have 10 dBCs improvement. Also uh, we have improvement in EVM. That's the case for 20 MHz LT signal and the, the second 10 MHz LT case we have improvement of uh, 11 dBCs in ACPR and also we have improvement in EVM. So, um, finally to, to conclude, uh, our algorithm has been implemented on LIME SDR boards and we verified it by measured results. So it's capable of cancelling any distortion up to sy system noise floor and we used three cases. The first one is uh, the most uh, uh, it's uh, the most easy and the second one is more most is more challenging since there the, the, uh, there were two two PA stages and the third one is the most challenging uh, which had two pH stages and uh, PA stages and with much higher uh, RF frequency and higher modulation bandwidth. So that's my presentation. Uh, do you have some question? Please. Uh, super interesting. I'm not sure if I uh, really understand everything. It's a little above my level of, um, but I can relate it to the audio world and uh, distortion in the audio amplifiers. I'm wondering, is is this was this work with every um, every individual amplifier, even if it's the same model, they might have different characteristics. Uh, yes, the system is adaptive. Okay. Uh, is adaptive. Uh, it uh, uh, learns the characteristics characteristics ah, okay. of every uh, amplifier, and in fact, uh, in, uh, tries to 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 produce the inverse characteristics. Yeah, sure. So you you uh, finally got uh, the, the the result, which is uh, linearized. You 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 predistort uh, the the signals to uh, to to make the inverse characteristic of, of main power amplifier. So and uh, the system is iterative and uh, uh, it's kind of um, not artificial intelligence, but uh, you can uh, easily learn uh, the the characteristic of of, of an, an any amplifier. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes total sense. I mean, just to comment on that, it also, um, it as I said, it's adaptive, so it uh, even compensates uh, changes in the characteristics over time, right, over and over time, temperature yes. and so on. So it's an ongoing so process. Uh, they are slow, uh, slow changes. Uh, they do not happen often and suddenly, uh, but they change d during the time. So that uh, uh, that uh, characteristics are monitored over time and. Uh, system uh, uh, very quickly uh, adapts to to that changes and uh, uh, creates the inverse characteristic of of amplifier of, of the current uh, characteristic of amplifiers. So um, you were you're doing the training uh, continuously, or do you? 
Uh, if you need to adapt over time, do you need to the, uh, the training process? Too? Yes. Uh, basically, it can be performed continuously with some period. I sh can I sh should not do it always, uh, but after some time, it depends okay. on operating conditions. On I I, I can do uh, new training and update the coefficients. But how how often do you need uh, to do this? Is it like once a second or like once an hour? Oh, it depends on <laughs> on how prefer. <laughs> I don't know. What's the secret? Uh, well, I, I uh, created our solution to to be able to uh, implement new coefic coefficients for uh, several seconds, two two seconds. So it's uh, it depends on real application. What do you have? What, what, what's the what's typical CPU usage and uh, what's the typical FPGA requirement uh, for well this? Well, for uh, FPGA requirement, I need enough space for storing the samples. I have um, three, three strings of samples needed uh, to, to make this mathematics. I do not have, I do, do not uh, use so much samples. I need 16 kilo, kilo samples for example. So um, I need just uh, to, to, to make this array and after that to collect them, it can yeah, be do, uh, I, done I'm offline. I'm mostly interested in, like, in the predest order part because like storing, yeah, I mean, because the unit space, but uh, more on the DSP side, which is uh, uh, real time uh, on, uh, on the predest side. I avoid real time. I avoid real time. But you have, so you have, you have a block, the predest order block, which yes, is on it, the path. It uh, yes, uh, it it uh, acts like a filter, but training is done offline. Uh, training of coefficients. You have a predistorter block. It's yeah. kind kind of, uh, kind of filter which has its own coefficients. And yeah, it, but that's asking it, you know, how it, how many tabs you have, how many uh, you know uh, DSP uh -huh. blocks you uh -huh. need for this filter. Uh -huh in uh, in predistorter. Yes. Well, I'm using um, um, multipliers. Embedded multipliers, uh, 18 by 18, for example, I use, for example, 40% of these uh, DSP blocks within a Cyclone 4 chip. I think 90 multi multipliers for, for this. So it depends on, 90, on the... 90, 90. 90, 90 mm -hmm. uh, uh, multipliers. So it's not so uh, big hardware. Also, you uh, um, beside uh, these uh, multipliers, you you need some some memory, enough memory to store, for example, 200 kilobytes of data, and after that, you just uh, read that data, perform offline uh, uh, calculations, calculations to to uh, to to find uh, new coefficients and upload it again into the the predistorter on FP on FPGA. Yeah, well, th that's only if you don't have enough bus bandwidth to stream yes, uh, in I real time, right? Well, uh, bus bandwidth I use for some other things, yeah. for streaming LT. So I spare that ba bandwidth. No, I I'm, I'm saying like in general, like if you're not speaking about Lime SDR. Okay, okay, okay. For I example, on our X3X we have well, plenty of bandwidth. I, I, <laughs> uh, in previous versions, I... Uh, the colleagues provided me that streaming, continuous streaming, and uh, that influence had influence on some other characteristics. They could not achieve uh, bandwidth of LT signals when, when they s uh, uh, stream everything. So I spared the, the effort and uh, uh, I, 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 I have done it, it offline. Just I, I, I need to, 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 to store somewhere them and after that to, to collect everything yeah understood okay and uh, what kind of uh, um, actual sample rate are you using for transmit and receive because if I remember correctly DPD usually needs uh, at least like three times uh, yes, the sampling three times. rate so, three times. You, so you on I both both on transmit and receive side uh, so you see uh, uh, you, you should have the same frequency if you have transmit but you, you need a receive part uh, doing at the same frequency. So 
um, uh, for example, in this hardware, I am running that 30.72 meta samples per second, but in QPC Express board, I used a uh, little bit higher frequency, uh, two times higher, and with this higher frequency, 61.44, I used, I, I, I achieved to, 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 pre to, to make pre-distortion running on LT signals 20 megahertz. Sorry, I'm um, confused. So, uh, 20 meg uh, LT signal requires uh, 30, 72 uh, mega samples, right? Uh, no. No? No. No, no, no. Uh, I managed with 61.44. Somehow, it's okay. not so... Uh, it, I, so, I basic, basically, you, you, you sample at 61, um, 61 uh -huh, something uh -huh. uh, mega samples, uh -huh. and that's enough... Uh, uh, oh, you 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 uh, transmit at uh, 61 point, uh, 40 some, 44 and you receive at 61.44, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's enough for you to. Uh, yes, DPD is running okay. at that frequency. I uh, store the samples after collect samples and do the mathematics, upload the coefficients, and that's it. So that's the frequency, which is, I think, uh, good enough for good also. enough for 20. Okay. Uh, and what about the CPU usage? What kind of uh, you know, CPU usage do you, um, do you use? For um, uh, post distorter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for post distorter. Post distorter, just plotting for the mathematics. Yeah, what, what, what kind of you know, I mean, what kind of CPU do you have? Uh, uh, and, uh, what kind of? It's uh, well, it's offline, and uh, the most of the time is spent on uh, getting the samples out from FPGA. After I do the, the mathematics very very uh very fast and upload the coefficient also very 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 fast mm. so it's not so important it's relaxed okay it's relaxed i do not upload uh, upload new coefficients so often i do not need that yeah but i mean yeah okay uh, so it's not so uh, so uh, um bottleneck. You, you mentioned that uh, it takes uh, two seconds. Is it two seconds to actually do all the mathematics, or is it two seconds including uh, the, the most uh, is uh, to receive the samples? Receive the samples. Okay. And I mean the 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 post uh, uh, distortion computation on the CPU. That's like a low priority background task. So I think it doesn't really matter so much. I mean, uh, no. Of course. Of course. It should it should be done as background task. If you only need to um, like redo the training like every minute or so or longer, it's okay. It doesn't matter if it. I mean, you can run that as the lowest priority on a uh, on your CPU. It doesn't matter. Uh, yes, yes, of course. You don't have uh, to to run on on uh, CPU with high performance. Um, just I, I need uh, floating point arithmetics within that CPU and everything w would be okay. Um, one question I had though is that because you're using the RX channel um, to receive what you transmit. Uh huh. What yes. that then how does your LTE base station works if it doesn't have RX anymore? <laughs> uh, base station. So okay. I uh, this is only for demo. Yeah, of course. Uh, but uh, like wha what what solution do you I recommend? Uh, well, uh, QPC Express board. So in the receive part, one receive part is dedicated uh, to DPD and the other would be dedicated for, for example, for performing LT. I have implemented on some other board. But can they be tuned to different frequency? The two, the two RX uh, chain? Uh, on different frequency. You have two uh, LMS 7002 chips. Oh, you have two different LMS chips? Two different LMS chips on... on okay, uh, it's not using the, the, the dual channel of the LMS. Okay. Yes. Okay. yes, that's the trick. Uh, this one is only for a demonstration, and it has one chip, and I cannot run LT at the same time running uh, uh, DPD. You can probably do uh, TDD mode. TDD mode, yes, of course. Which is also LT. <laughs> right. TDD. <laughs> Who is using TDD? Well, China. Oh, oh, uh, the TDD is very popular. Yeah, China is all TDD. India uh. is all TDD. Uh. I mean. How does the uh, because you said like the um, 
so this, cal this algorithm can also compensate for the like imperfection uh, of the IQ imbalance, for instance, of mm -hmm. uh, that you transmit. Yes. But how does the um, IQ imbalance of your Eric's influence? Because you're gonna, tr your algorithm is gonna try to compensate for something that it isn't really on the well, in fact, uh huh. Uh, yes, good question. Uh, I cover Rx but at the same frequency uh, of uh, imperfections of receive part in that DPD. The receive we, we have one uh, real uh, receive part in the in the other chip, so we can uh, uh, influence only the transmitter part. Okay, any more questions? No? Okay, thank you. Okay, welcome.